everyone today i'm gonna be teaching you how to do sinigang <laughs> this is gonna be a really quick video but um what's different you know everybody makes sinigang video <laughs> i'm gonna do something different hold on doing since we are not out for any adventure September, October we are actually spending this month canning food because there's a lot of available vegetables that are really cheap at the market and we we kind of take advantage of those we start canning just like my husband did I'm gonna do canning Filipino style <laughs> I don't know if Filipinos really do canning in Philippines but uh, since I got here in America, I learned that my husband's family side, they uh, canning is very popular. So I'm kind of thinking, why don't I do the same thing? Because, you know, sometimes cooking sinigang is difficult, especially on winter. You cannot really get those ingredients that you need. To my husband sinigang. loves sinigang. You have to agree. <laughs> yes i do i love it i love it i love it delicious okay so 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 what i'm gonna do today is um i'm gonna do the same thing i'm so jealous he's doing this scanning and everything the good thing about it we don't really have to cook every time we are in the mood of eating certain food just like sinigang i can have sinigang like every freaking day <laughs> it is swearing going back to the topic what i'm gonna be doing today is i'm gonna do a cooking video but it's not just a simple cooking video just like filipinos do because there's so much um cooking videos going around on the internet on youtube and whatnot um about sinigang so um this video that i'm gonna be making is something different you don't have to follow the procedure how i cook my sinigang but how i can it will give you an idea, especially those Filipinos abroad that cannot cook sinigang whenever they want, you know? I hope this video will help you guys. Good thing about sinigang, you know, when you reheat sinigang, what happens? They get more spicy. So that's a good thing about doing this. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing, you don't really have to follow the recipe. I'm, I'm still gonna show you how I do it, but once i do my canning that will give you an idea how you can preserve your sinigang without putting it in a refrigerator because you know what happens to sinigang when you put it in a refrigerator and it has swamp cabbage and all that vegetables in it it stinks uh this is just an idea for you guys you can consider doing if you are not in philippines and ha and you want to have an available sinigang in your house whenever you want to eat sinigang okay the first thing i do is i'm gonna boil water in a big pot um so here this is the first time i'm gonna be doing this because i don't use um ribs because it's gonna take space in my mason jars so what i'm always been doing is um we use what kind of pork i like pork I'm, I'm sorry what uh what beef do we have right now uh, beef layer beef sirloin beef sirloin so it doesn't have um it doesn't have bones where we can enhance the flavor of the beef to, by having those bones so what i'm doing so this is the this is how my husband cut it he's very supportive i love him but you know filipinos are used to having like kind of bigger chunks of slices of meat well he wanted it this way kind of <laughs> I don't know what how what size is this he really likes it this small he said he doesn't understand why filipinos have to cut it so big <laughs> but he likes it small this way so so there's no bones to it 
So what I did, I bought some soup bones, beef soup bones at the market. I'm gonna be boiling it before I put the beef. So let's let it boil first so we can have a really nice flavor on our broth for this sinigang. I keep on talking about canning. Um, I don't know if my, my husband explained this to you guys. If you really want to do canning, I'm just going to give you an idea. This is it. The size of these mason jars are quart. They are quart size mason jars. For those who want to do canning, I just want to let you know, guys. When you buy your mason jar, you buy the one that is really for canning. Don't buy those mason jars that have solid top wherein the cover is like this like like um it's completely covered it's just like this one piece what you need to buy is something like this yes my baby you will want to buy the mason jars that have lids and bands separated like this mason jars with lids and bands why because this band if this is just gonna be just one piece for example this band alone will not guarantee that this um, these jars are gonna seal completely for you so the good thing about um this separated lids and bands this lid as you can see there is a brown color around it that brown color is actually um what material is that it's kind of rubbery kind of it softens when you boil this lid so after you put your food inside the jar and you put this lid on there it actually hardens and kind of sucks in and seals your jar that will guarantee you that your jar is completely sealed you don't rely on the band These scanning jars guarantees up to where is that seals up to 18 months you see here based on our experience our canning our food could last up to two years they're just saying it's 18 months but we our canning lasts up to two years and they're good you will know if it's not sealed that when you open it it's not gonna pop this thing right here you cannot separate them easy and when you open it like this i actually have to use a knife to pop it out and then it's gonna you're gonna hear a loud pop that means it's really sealed for you really good right now so, we're still boiling the water with those soup bones in it i want to kind of boil it maybe for 30 minutes i don't know like i said you just cook your sinigang how you want to cook it i'm gonna give you some some key points to make sure that your sinigang will really preserve good for you as you can it so it only you only require one ingredient and i'm gonna tell you about it later while we are waiting for the soup bones to like give us a good broth what we are doing with the beef that my husband has sliced already, we are going to put it in a pressure cooker and uh, pressure cook it for a good 20 minutes. 20 minutes to make sure that the beef are going to be soft when you eat it. Okay, so let's pressure cook it. It has uh, beef broth and olive oil. Okay, he, he said he put beef broth and olive oil in here. put a lot of tomatoes because it it somehow gives the food the acid that it needs to preserve it longer so for this cooking i already put 10 roma tomatoes medium size and one whole big onion
Okay, so I put in uh, um, string beans, the eggplant. I'm gonna put them the same time so that they don't get too overcooked. Although Filipinos like half cooked vegetables, especially with sinigang like this, you will not want to cook it half cooked when you are going to can it because it's gonna. Uh, I already done it before and it unsealed my jars. So you want to cook it, not, re not, not to overcook it, but just to cook it enough that the vegetables are cooked well. Now we're going to put these peppers. This is what will make your soup spicy. Um, I don't know how to call this in English, but you can find these in Asian stores. Everything that I put in here are from Asian stores except for the meat. So I'm going to put, I'm going to be putting 12 of these only because I am targeting to make 12 quarts of sinigang. in there and then you're just basically gonna wait for it to boil wait for it look watch if it's gonna be gonna be cooked enough so we can say it's ready for coffee Especially with, um, um, we're going to be putting swamp cabbage here. It's the same way. We have to make sure that the swamp cabbage is cooked well. Not soggy. So I'm just going to boil this really quick before I put in the swamp cabbage. I'm going to put the salt. I don't know how much salt you want to want to put in here. I don't have measurement for you. I don't have measurement for you. You just for taste. It, it it's it's just dependent on how salty you want it to be. So I'm gonna put a little each time and then try it. Depending on how sour you want it to be. My husband like it really sour. So for this pot, I'm I normally put five in it, but since I'm making more this time, I'm gonna be putting probably more than that. So we will see.
Okay, good morning. Um, I was not able to give an update yesterday. So yesterday, my husband has a takeover in canning the sinigang See, for me. Saying, I because the rest of the work. Yeah, he had to because it's so hot. I cannot, I cannot do canning by myself. And he's good at it. He can, he can tolerate the hot now, jars. Our, our, our brat was taking a little you know? tantrum anyways. Yeah, and Baron is having some moments. <laughs> but anyway, so for that what that batch we made, I had what fifteen. Fifteen quarts of the I'm so happy. So so I'm gonna show you what it looked like. So it looks like this. It's fifteen so, quarts of Filipino deliciousness. <laughs> so what we did um we we put the jars just a recap um we put these jars these mason jars in the oven on 225 degrees fahrenheit yes for you have to heat your jars for like 30 minutes 30 minutes just empty just put it in a tray i'll sanitize them to sanitize it but others what they do they boil them like submerge it in boiling water but our technique is we put this in a oven and and heat it for you, you can only do that with minutes. broth based uh, can you hold this like soups and stuff so like heavy. that but what do you want me to do with it put it down because oh. it's heavy oh. You can only do that with broth-based stuff. If it's a thicker things like sauces and things, you have to boil them or heat them in the oven to help them seal. But uh, if you uh, try to do that, like I said, with them, they're going to not seal on you, and they're going to actually pop open and spoil. So anyways, uh, any of your soup-type stuff, your uh, anything that has broth in it like this, uh, it's very easy just to go ahead and do that. Again, have the stuff boiling, preheat the jars, and you fill them, put the lids, seal lids on it, and they're going to go ahead and a uh, pressure seal. And that's what actually canning is, pressure sealing. Yeah. And um, reminder, you don't fill it all the way up. You have to leave a space. So just, it will... Just put the neck of the jar. Yeah. You don't you don't fill it all the way up. Um, actually, you can show them this dimple in here before it cans or pressure seals. And this actually gives you indication that it has sealed. This is usually convexed it's actually bubbled up yeah and what happens is is it pressure seals and sucks down and that's again the pressure seal you can see this is you now can see it. it's concave like... it's the dimple is downward and it should be downward if it's still up that means it did not seal that's why you have to make sure you wipe those rims after filling because sometimes you get juice or anything like that on it but pre-wipe them uh put the boiled seals on it tighten it tight and like i said it'll pressure seal down you actually hear them making a popping sound when they do yes it usually takes 20 to 30 minutes for that to occur. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you are very interested on trying it, go ahead. There's there's no right or wrong way to do the sinigang. Just make sure you have all uh, that main ingredient that I, I told you about. Hope this idea that we're sharing will be helpful for other people who can, who doesn't have the, you know, the access to all the ingredients to make sinigang just like me like you know i'm just gonna tell you a story i i, I should not forget about this um there is this one situation that i made sinigang my mom was still here during that time and um we wanted to cook sinigang so it, she will feel like she's at home so we decided we're gonna oh we're gonna cook sinigang and then turns out i don't have the sinigang mix and you know what happened my husband have to drive all the way to Pittsburgh for how long? It was a search and destroy mission. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, an hour and a half out and back. Uh, yeah, so we, we had to wait that long. So it's really, you know, it's hard for us. You cannot really find a place close enough to buy all the ingredients you're gonna need. So this is really a good idea for me. Feel free to ask us questions. Uh, again, I'm sure we've rambled about a lot of things, so yeah, some we of may, might be confusing, but uh, we, we might have forgotten to mention other things. Yeah, we might have forgotten to mention other things. So just 
ask us questions. We'll see you again to the next one. Bye. Bye.